Greetings. This is, or was, an electric fly killer. Uh, it's dead, and that's why I got it here. It's dead on two counts. First of all, the tubes are gone. You can see they've blacked out on the end, uh, although, interestingly, they've both blacked differently on the other end. Uh, that's not really a problem, they tend to fail anyway. I've got a pair of white tubes which were once upon a time in a radio cassette display in a High Street Automotive Store. So I've got tubes so I can at least light it up. But the other thing is, the grid doesn't work. It's not going to kill anything with that. So, what's wrong with it? Well, with the lights still on, we can take a look up inside and see that something has gone bang. There was a component there. Uh, whatever it was, it's blown itself to smithereens, scorched out the cable as well, and it's taken out the transformer inside, or whatever power supply circuit is inside. It's not generating any voltage at all. So I uh, thought I'd... Um, I take a look, see if it's fixable, or if not, and how it works, and what can be done with it. Something of note with this particular model, and you'll see this model uh, in a lot of um, uh, you'll see a lot this in a, in a lot of eBay accounts. Is if you take a look at the connect the, the mounting points for the for the grid, not the front grid, but the electric grid. You can see it's got these plastic stubs, and they're actually all they are is these. And there's only you know you can take two of these out, and you've actually got access then to the high voltage grid connections on the end. Now one alone isn't really a problem, but you unscrew two of these things. And you've got the live grid connections there. So it's a bit um, disconcerting. Uh, you know, it worked. Uh, I've seen other models, though. Uh, we've got a, a new one in the office now, which is um, they're actually separated out by quite a large length of what looks like ceramic. So uh, the grid is well insulated from the side of the case. Anyway, let's take a look inside and see how it works. I was expecting something fairly complex for the bug zapper side of it. I was expecting some sort of small step-up transformer, like a like a handheld bug zapper one, but designed for mains. But no, what we've got here is a dual fluorescent lighting ballast, an electronic ballast for driving the two tubes. And this is just a, a high voltage transformer with an output of 2000 volts at 5 milliamps. Uh, I've checked it with the meter. It's getting about 30 kilo ohms uh, resistance across the secondary but the primary is open circuit and if I can just focus in on that primary or better still if I unbolt it you can see that it's overheated it's melted its insulation through the back here and that's actually gone open circuit so whatever's gone gone wrong on this it's not good. Um, this obviously burnt out as well. Whatever component was there obliterated itself. This was, I think it was probably running overnight and discovered in the morning that it's it's gone dead. Fortunately, what it didn't do is catch fire because you can see there's a lot of melting damage here. So that transformer is well and truly dead. Although we've got resistance on the the Secondary, the primary is open circuit. So at the moment, it's just a glorified 30 watt fluorescent tube. So can I fix it? Well, that's knackered. So what I'd need is another 2000 volt transformer. Uh, I haven't got one of these 2000 volt 5 milliamp transformers. I've only got this 2000 volt 500 milliamp microwave oven transformer. Well, that's not going to work on it, is it? Is it? And one way to find out, and that involves that transformer and this 150 watt metal halide ballast, which will just limit the power 
going through that. So the output from this would be about 75 milliamps, which is a significant step up from five. Let's have a go. What we've got now is the bug zapper minus the zapper. The high voltage section has been removed. It's just got the, the fluorescent driver. The high voltage connections which went to the board are now being brought out to the side. Incidentally, this cable, the corner of the, the rating on the side, is only 600 volts. And then we have the ballast, which will limit the current of the microwave oven transformer. There's the supply to it and the return will come through that one. On this length of old vacuum cleaner cable. And I think I will change that fuse for something a bit um, a bit more reasonable. And then we have the microwave oven transformer. The black cable is the ground section, which will go to one side of this. The orange cable is the 2000 volt output, which will go to the other side. Incidentally, um, if you've got a hybrid vehicle or an electric vehicle, same rules apply. Don't go anywhere near the orange cables. They're all the high voltage ones. You don't mess around with them. So I just need to put all this together now and take it outside where all the bugs are. Well, there don't seem to be any bugs around right now, but I think it would make light work of them if, the, uh, if what it does with a piece of Leandi is anything to go by. Power is off at the moment, so it's safe to poke this through. Rest that on there. Light off, grid on. Here we are in daylight again, and you can see the way the, the power is connected here. The supply, the mains coming in, goes via the 150 watt ballast, which just acts as a current limiter, and then out from there into the transformer, and then from the transformer, the other side goes down to neutral. The white wire you can see coming off is the high voltage connection. On the back of the transformer, the connection from the other end of the winding connects straight to the chassis of the transformer which is why the black cable is connected to that and that goes to one side of the grid. The white cable connects to the orange cable which goes to the other side of the grid. Now what would be nice here is if I had another microwave oven transformer and optionally another ballast, another ballast was double the power, another microwave oven transformer would let me connect it back to back with this one so effectively you've got two 240 volt inputs, two 2000 to 2200 volt outputs. And by connecting the winding in reverse, the primary winding in reverse on the one transformer, you get them running in opposite phases. So you get about, you get over 4,000 volts between the two transformers. But for that, I'd need optionally another ballast to increase the power, but definitely another microwave oven transformer. Like for example, the one which I used to burn the loudspeaker out. Oh, well, look what I found. Let's put that in circuit as well. There we go. The primaries are wired in parallel, each with their own ballast, and the secondaries are then connected one to each side of the grid with the two chassis of the transformers connected together. Now, if I've got these connections the wrong way round, and I know I have at the moment, what you will get if I put something in there, such as a leaf or a piece of Lilandi, all you're getting is a slight hissing 
from the primary winding of the transformer, which is damaged when I burned out the loudspeaker. But there's very little voltage across the leaf. There's not much going on. That's because each transformer is in phase, so you've basically got 2,000 volts to ground from each side, but the grid itself, relative one grid to the other, they're both floating at around about the 2,000 volts mark. So there's very little going on with that leaf. So what I need to do is disconnect, swap these over, thereby reversing the phase of the primary winding. And in turn put in the, the secondaries 180 degrees out of step. This time We have 4,000 odd volts across the grid. Power off, unplugged. This I can adjust by varying the, the pitch of the, the grid, obviously with it powered off. You're tightening the bolts on one end, you can vary the position of the grids relative to each other. Now it's behaving itself until something lands on the grid. That, I think you agree, is what all fly catchers should do. Running quietly, optionally with the lights on, but if anything flies in, Jacob's laddering to the top. Unfortunately, there's nothing around at the moment to fly into it that I particularly want to fly into it. There's no wasps or anything like that. Um, there might be some midges when it gets darker, so we'll, uh, we'll see, if it, uh, see if it starts to attract anything. It'd be interesting to see if any of the smaller flies, such as gnats and midges, if it's that sensitive enough to trigger from one. I mean, if anything gets through that grid, chances are it's going to get that. It's definitely very trigger happy. I think you agree that 4,000 volts or so is definitely the right voltage for a bug zapper. It sounds like this, you actually wish you had a wasp nest. Well, there's nothing worth sapping. There don't seem to be any midges about at the moment. So uh, you'll have to just stick with the bits of Lelandi.
Thanks for watching.